Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Development Debate on Electric Vehicles in India, Opportunities and Challenges. Sponsor for the session is Carl Zeiss India. Today, in this episode of Mojo for Industry Development Debate, experts will share their opinion on the state of the Indian EV ecosystem and challenges faced by them. So to take the session forward, I invite our editor, Subhaji Troy, to moderate the panel discussion. Uh, thanks, Nia. Thank you so much. Uh, so India is witnessing a rapid shift towards electric vehicles in recent years. Any major shift, uh, there are both opportunities and challenges that come with the adoption of electric vehicles in India. To discuss on this, we have a distinguished panel consist of uh, Mr. Avijit Sena, who is the National Program Director, Ease of Doing Business. Then uh, we welcome uh, Dr. Rashi Gupta, who is the, uh, she's the founder and managing director of Vision Mechatronics. We are also privileged to join by uh, uh, Mr. Manoj K. S. He is the head of business development for uh, industrial quality solutions, Jais Industrial Metallurgy. And then we have uh, Mr. Ajinder Thombe, who is the chief technology officer at Dhut Transmission. So to start with, Mr. Avijit, uh, would you like to throw light on India's preparedness for EV revolution, if you can just tell us? India's e-mobility transition is not a new story. It's at least a 10 to 12 year story when Manmohan Singh used to be our first Prime Minister who uh, have given, inaugurated one of the charging stations in 2011. I, that station does not even exist today. It could not survive. So, from 2011 to 2020, 2022, it's a decade long story of electric mobility where we always compared an electric car with a diesel or petrol car. While the problem was not in the car, the problem was in the infrastructure. And someone, when after doing a lot of these wrong equivalences, could not find or could not reach to that result which everyone anticipated and expected from them, then they say there is a problem with the infrastructure, not with the car. So rather than comparing a car with another car, we should have always compared a petrol pump with a charging station. So that economically, Technically, from the financing point of view, from utilization, ROI, asset management, and all type of earning, including the technical detailing of the standards, specification, and all ease of doing business and difficulty of doing business should be compared with between electric charging station and petrol pump. Right. Second part, which I would say is there is a considerable saving someone who is electric vehicle or using electric vehicle or switching to electric vehicle does to their pocket when they switch from petrol or when they switch from diesel. So if today my house is powered by a grid and tomorrow my house is powered by a solar panel, including the storage, I should be knowing that what I'm going to save and what I'm going to invest. That's the kind of clarity we could not give to people who are for the fleet or for the individual purpose using or going to switch to an electric vehicle. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Asif, we are discussing about the status of uh, no, uh, EV adoption in India. And uh, can you just tell us where, where we stand today? I think we are standing at the beginning of the curve. So, when we are at the beginning of the curve, we have the advantage of learning from others. And when we have the advantage of learning from others, we do not make a lot of mistakes. We don't make too many mistakes. And when we don't make too many mistakes, we are more successful. So at this point of time, we are at a very good stage in our nation with respect to technology also. Only thing is we need to just change our attitudes. We cannot have the attitude of chalta hai. That is one thing we need to give away completely. It, once we do that, I think we are going to be in a transformative space in the next three years because the energy is shifting from west to east now. And you'll see such a big transition that is going to happen and rather a transformation of energy that is going to happen and not just in the energy space, even in the EV space, where India is going to contribute for the world at large. So we have the brains, we have the technology. What we now need to do is start believing in this technology, start adopting it and see it's a chicken and egg loop. You know, if you say that I, when the cost will come down, I will adapt. But the cost will not come down if there's no economies of scale. And economies of scale will come when you start adapting things. Exactly. So it's a chicken and egg loop which we need to break. And we need to believe that, yes, this is going to be the next thing that we all want to do. 
Uh, Mr. Manoj, just to quickly understand from you that uh, you know, where we stand today and so do you see a kind of traction happening in the technology adoption for EVs? Uh, I will answer this question from uh, you know our company point of view. We are an instrumentation company supporting the whole chain of value chain from raw materials until the the car or the two wheeler space. Uh, if I if I uh, uh, talk from a company perspective, we have seen massive growth happening for us in the EV space. So uh, we have seen that. I mean, if you just look at the numbers in the two wheeler segment. you can see that we are, we are selling around a lack of vehicles two wheeler three wheeler and all those things put together and many of them uh, the top notch companies have been have become our customers we see a lot of r&d going around right from raw material stage to uh, you know electrode manufacturing to cell manufacturing r&d development in india battery makers so when when we look at the whole space from uh, you know battery makers to bms to uh two wheeler makers there is a wonderful flow what we see uh, coupled with it uh, what we have seen is there is a consistency in the policy uh yeah i think uh, some targets were not met which was mentioned but i think in principle uh, to have 70% of two wheelers you know 70 30% of private cars 70% of commercial vehicles and 80% of two wheelers to be electric uh, i think we are probably going in that direction and uh, you must all realize that india can change quite fast and probably this is one area where we would do that we didn't have i mean just to uh, give you an analogy we didn't have landlines but we moved on to mobiles so fast so probably that's coming so uh, mr rajesh booth uh, transmission actually plays a critical role they provide uh, you know transmission solutions for even the batteries for ev industry so how do you look at this scenario how encouraging is the uh, scenario as of now as i know it's all started with 2013 big uh, national electric mobility mission plan promoting 30% ev by 2030 uh, i also want to add that nothing has gone wrong we are standing on a highway and it is up to us uh, what speed we take on the highway of course there should be a charging infrastructure beside the highway right. so this is what i feel uh, also government has taken other in- in- initiatives like fame uh, Uh, addressing issues like uh, charging infrastructure battery disposal recycling uh, they are working more so just to conclude abhijit sir would like to ask you that what are your recommendations once again uh, that can encourage ev adoption in india and what uh, at least india as a country can learn from other countries uh, in this aspect india is a country where at this stage of time where we have reached in terms of economy has a different type of potential which all of us need to recognize first before we start doing transaction with it the generation which came after 2000 is a very impatient generation it is requiring your passport your driving license your pan card each and every thing on your door step everything has reached to you on your door step and that's to in a time bound manner with precision without mistake and this type of transparency accountability and precision which this generation is expecting so the technology is enabling the transition in a big way and this technology this type of requirement is also a call for a different type of procurement process l1 l2 is no more valid no more helping us in doing a procurement for emerging technologies and to meet all of this there is only one solution that the need of the technology the use of the technology and this use of technology into electric mobility is going to change the way we used to transit from point a to point b the way we used to be charged paying and the freight of the cost of the passenger and the goods is going to change the way you have been transiting into metro without having the ownership of the metro trains you are going to tomorrow transit from one place to another place without having ownership of the car this is the expectation going to grow this is the expectation going to knock your doors tomorrow if industry is ready for this go ahead if you are not ready for this do a brainstorming come back market is there to welcome you so thank you once again our panelists mr abhijit dr rashi mr manoj and mr rajendra for your participation we thank sponsor for the session culture india and we also thank uh, uh, ease of doing business as well as uh, national highways for ev for supporting this event
For more updates, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon.